Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So guys, as you know, yesterday there was an AMA and Ask Me Anything with Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, and it was hosted by Corey Johnson, the chief market strategist there at Ripple. And so I got to say, there was a few interesting quotes uh, from Brad. Um, I know Alex Cobbs covered this. I'm not going to get into huge detail about this. Um, but the big statement was the quarter three statement. And basically in quarter three, Brad Garlinghouse stated that uh, it was a record for institutions for buying and holding XRP. And so we're going to speculate a little bit. What does this mean? Why are institutions buying and holding? Possibly, probably for transferring down the road. Being able to hold that digital asset now so that when the price does run up, maybe they're not paying a premium for it. There are many different um, possibilities going on. And so this was a big statement uh, made by Brad Garlinghouse. But there was another statement too that uh, nobody was really uh, latching on to. However, I thought it was kind of a bit of a downer. I mean, not so terrible that we should be deterred or anything like that. But he did mention that he thought that 2018 was going to be the year that everything kind of uh, took off, you know, uh, the crypto space became embraced by institutions and governments. Uh, and it doesn't look, I mean, it, it seems as though, or at least Brad thinks as though, you know, governments are dragging their feet a little bit, you know, and, and we haven't quite picked up and taken off to that point uh, that we wanted to in 2018. So now he's estimating maybe the latter half of 2018 early part of 2019, and that's when we're going to see some real movement going on in the crypto space. Other than the Brad Garlinghouse AMA guys, uh, there was this article today, um, which I think is amazing. Ripple update the plaintiff withdraws his class action lawsuit. Uh, and so on August 22nd, the United States District Court of California issued a statement stating that plaintiff Ryan Kofi has voluntarily taken back the class action lawsuit he filed against Ripple Labs. The Ryan Kofi case has been the talk of the town for quite some time now. He initially filed the case on May 3rd, alleging that the XRP tokens were fully generated even before the distribution began. The plaintiff further went on to accuse it as a never-ending ICO. So guys, basically the statement here, Ryan Kofi, or Kofi or whatever, has voluntarily taken back the case, uh, reasons for which are unknown. So um, there's no longer a class action lawsuit against Ripple. There's another check mark in the right column for us guys. And for my longtime viewers, I know you guys love the math videos. Uh, I have a couple more math videos uh, planned uh, coming down the pipe, so please stay tuned. I have been working on them and uh, they are planned for release uh, shortly. Uh, it does take some research, so please bear with me guys. Uh, I do release a video every day and I wanna make sure the math is accurate. So thanks guys for holding in. One last thing, right here, how XRP is seriously undervalued right now. And so guys, we're hearing about all these things, you know, quarter three, record for institutions buying and holding XRP, yet it's still only trading at about 32 cents per XRP. Uh, as of now, right now, we're seeing XRP at about 31.8 cents, so 0.31885, okay? And XRP is considered very undervalued. Considering all these things, looking at the recent partnership Ripple has made with the three exchanges, uh, and those are the same three that we've been talking about. So this means that once XRapid is at 100% functionality, traditional remittance transactions that used to take two to three days will now settle in under two minutes, guys. Also the SBI holdings and VC trade crossing the Pacific over to Japan. We find the SBI holdings company that has partnered with Ripple for over two years. The same firm has recently launched the VC trade exchange that is XRP centric. So guys, in conclusion, the events, developments and techno technological advancements that make XRP great are more than we can discuss in one article, but with the few provided above, we can understand that the digital asset is seriously undervalued at current levels of about 32 cents. Perhaps when the hangover of the ETF settles, as well as regulatory uncertainty across the globe, XRP will rise to its full potential. And guys, again, we're looking at the two prong effect here. So there's crypto markets in general, when they talk about the ETF, they're talking about the Bitcoin ETF and negative sentiment around that right now is causing um, you know, the crypto markets to still kind of stay stagnant and dormant. But once we see some movement, once we see some positive, um, some kind of catalyst that will create a positive um, sentiment in the market, we'll see cryptos all go up, kind of all simultaneously, including XRP. But the more important thing with XRP is this kind of stuff, right? The Brad Garlinghouse, partnerships with banks, continual forward movement for Ripple, the company, XRP, the token, 
good things happening down the line. Maybe 2018 isn't the year, or maybe fourth quarter 2018 will be the beginning. Uh, but certainly into 2019, we're going to see some amazing things. Anyways, guys, what do you guys think? Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.